This is Dr. Giziri, and uh, today I will be going to talk about uh, the PPA guide for the use with the COVID-19 patients. Uh, during our presentation, we will talk about uh, the types of required PPEs, then uh, donning for the PPEs and doffing for the PPEs. Here, this, uh, this uh, slide shows the type of uh, the PPEs that has to be used by the healthcare workers in different areas. So here in uh, the, the, the patient room, as we all know that um, uh, COVID-19 is transmitted through droplet and contact. So what we need here is to have the surgical mask and then uh, the goggle to prevent the contamination of, of uh, conjunctiva with the virus and an isolation gown and the non-sterile gloves. If I'm going to do an aerosol generating procedure, like uh, taking swab, suctioning, whatever, so I have to wear the N95 mask. The N95 mask should be a uh, fit tested N95 mask. And uh, uh, again, we have to make sure that the, uh, the fit tested uh, N95 mask is used, and you have to sure, make sure that your beard has been shaved because any facial hair will interfere with the uh, N95 mask. Uh, the goggles and the isolation gown, again, we need also to have the apron to prevent the contamination of the front of the isolation gown by uh, any splashes that come from the patient and then the uh, non-sterile uh, gloves. For, uh, for those who are with the patient in the ambulance, we are, we are going to use the surgical mask, goggles, isolation gown and the uh, non sterile gloves. Here for the regulatory personnel, we need to use the surgical mask, we need to use the uh, isolation gown and the non uh, sterile gloves. If there will be splashes, if I, I expect splash, we have to use the goggles. For the corridors and administrative areas, the use of PPEs is not required unless it is asked by the hospital administration. For the housekeepers, the use of the PPEs will differ because we will have here the heavy duty gloves and the boots together with the surgical mask, mask goggles and the isolation gown. The patient in all times he has to wear the surgical mask if tolerated and for the visitors we have all to know that the visitors are not allowed to enter in the case of COVID-19 but in some uh, exceptional cases so the, the visitor will have to wear the surgical mask, isolation gown and non-sterile gloves. Now we are going to go to donning and doffing of the PPEs, but we have to know that for every healthcare worker, he has to know very well how to use the PPEs, what are the types of available PPEs, and he has to know uh, very carefully that the type of fitted test uh, surgical mask is available before entering to the patient room. And he has also to do or, or to demonstrate competency in performing appropriate infection control practice. For donning or putting the PPE, we have to know that the PPEs have certain consequence or sequence to be uh, used. Yani there, there are, uh, we have to start with something and we have to move to the other PPE. And uh, all the PPEs have to be used correctly before entering the patient room and we have to be worn during the patient room. And after putting them while in the patient room, I has, there should not be any adjustment to the PPEs so long that I'm there. And when I, whenever I uh, remove the PPE, I have to remove them slowly so to, I can avoid agitation and dispersion of the virus from the PPE. So, we, we have to identify 
and gather the PPE, it has to be in a, a portable or a cart at outside the patient room. And then I will perform the hand hygiene, the first thing before putting any PPEs, and I will put the isolation gown. So the first PPE to be put or to be done is the isolation gown. And then I have to tie the, all the ties around the gown so I will close it and to be uh, protected by the isolation gown. Then, after putting the isolation gown, I will be using the, I will be putting the N95 respirator. So, the N95 respirator, as I mentioned, the, it has to be fit tested, and I have to know the type and size of the N95 mask that I'm going to use, I have to use with the patient. Then, if the respirator has a noise, a nose piece, so I have to adjust it very well. And, and the, the respirator should be extended under the chin. I have to use both my hands to adjust the respirator. And then I have to do the seal check. I, I, I need, so I have been tested on this type of mask and fit, fit test, but the, the seal check should be done by every time I put the N95 mask. I must inhale and exhale well, so I make sure that there is no any leakage in the mask that I'm using. This is a very important issue. The second important issue, again, for those who have facial beard, they have to um, shave it very well and to make sure that there is no hair interfering because it will affect the potency of the N95 mask. For those with beard, they can use the PAPR, which is the powered uh, purified air respirator. This one can be used instead for those who have the beards, instead from the N95 mask. Again, the respirator uh, strap should be placed one on the crown of the head and one at the base of the neck. And uh, uh, if um, I'm using a surgical face mask, mask so the, the mask has to be tied one on the crown of the head and one at the base of the neck. This, the third uh, thing to be placed on is the goggles or the face sheet. So I placed first the isolation gown, then I place the N95 mask or the surgical mask, then I will place the face shield or goggles. And I will perform hand hygiene, then I will put the uh, gloves, and now I will be ready to enter to the patient room. Here you can see the, the picture here that the, this patient, this uh, healthcare worker is wearing the isolation gown, is wearing the respirator, and then the face shield. And here we can see that the gloves are covering also the, uh, the wrist of the isolation gown. It has to be covering all the place so everything will be covered and if I'm going expecting that I will do an aerosol producing a, a generating procedure so I have to put above this isolation gown I have to use an apron. Another picture. Now how to take off the PPEs. As I said, that there are sequence on, for putting on the PPEs, and there is another sequence for removing the PPEs. The, the first important, I, I, we, we put, we used to put the isolation gown first, then we put the N95 mask, the face shield, and last thing was the gloves. Now, the first thing to be removed is the gloves. The, the gloves will be the most contaminated PPE, so I have to remove it, and I have to remove it carefully, and to not contaminate my hand and to fold it and put it in the uh, waste uh, disposal, infectious waste disposal. After removing the gloves, I have to perform hand hygiene. Then to remove the gown. I can untie all the ties or I can break the ties if it is easy for me. And then also to fold the isolation gown very slowly to prevent the um, agitation to prevent the dispersal of the virus that might be at the isolation gun. So I have to uh, 
remove it slowly and to fold it then to dispose it in the infectious waste bin now you can remove you can leave the patient room safely so you have you have uh, removed your your uh, isolation gown you have you, you have removed your gloves so you can remove you leave the, the patient room safely and uh, outside the patient room perform hand hygiene and remove the the shield or goggles and to be followed by removing the face mask so you remove the face shield first away from the head and don't touch the front of the face seal then you are going to remove the respirator uh, and to put to put the respirator inside the infectious waste uh, disposal to infectious waste uh, bin and then to perform the hand hygiene how to take the 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 the, the face mask for the face mask you have to carefully untie it and to untie the lower the one at the base of the neck first and then to untie the other one at the crown of the head and to hold the, the mask by your hand from the, the back tie and remove it in the infectious waste bin the same will be done for the uh, surgical mask and for the N95 respirator after removing and after disposing the respirator you have to perform hand hygiene again thank you very much when donning ppe perform hand hygiene for 15 seconds apply one to two pumps of alcohol-based hand rub to the palms of dry hands rub hands together rubbing palm to palm in between and around the fingers on the back of the hands as well as the fingertips and nail beds. Continue rubbing until hands are completely dry. Hand hygiene using alcohol-based hand rub is the preferred method. Use soap and water only when hands are visibly soiled. Tie back long hair if applicable. Do not bring unnecessary equipment in the room. Inspect your equipment for any damage prior to donning each piece. Clean shaven, don your gown. Tie around the neck and around the waist. Secure gown using a bow that can easily be untied. Ensure all clothing is covered by gown. Lift your chin and place your fit-tested N95 respirator over your nose and mouth. Stretch the bottom strap over your head and place it on the back of your neck. Ensure strap is on bare skin only, no loose hairs. Place the top strap on the crown of your head. Ensure that the straps are not overlapping or crossed. Check if mask is properly formed to face. Ensure no fold by running fingers along the edges of the mask. Mold the metal nose strip to conform to the shape of your nose. Do this by placing both your middle fingers at the bridge of your nose and use your index finger to press along the edge of mask along from the sides of your nose into the cheeks, creating a good seal. Repeat pressing index fingers with pressure especially alongside of the nose. Perform a seal check by placing your hands at the side of your face at eyebrow level without touching the mask. Exhale quickly once to check if air escapes the mask and hits the palms of hands. If you feel leakage, readjust the fit of your N95 respirator and perform another seal check. Don your face shield by placing the strap at the back of your head. Ensure that the top of the face shield is resting in the middle of your forehead. Put on your gloves. Ensure that gloves are placed over the cuff of the gown so that the skin of your wrist is not exposed. Perform a final personal protective equipment check prior to going into the room. Alternatively, have a colleague perform the final check. After entering the patient's room, keep hands away from your face. Only open one door at a time to maintain negative pressure in the room. The doffing process poses the highest risk of transmission to healthcare workers. Make sure to take your time removing your personal protective equipment. A guide will be posted in the anteroom outlining the steps of PPE removal for staff. Please refer to this guide when doffing your PPE. Step into the anteroom and ensure the door is closed behind you. 
Remove gloves using the glove-to-glove -glove and skin-to-skin -skin technique. Place in the garbage. You may perform hand hygiene at this time if there is any concern your hands became contaminated during glove removal. Next, untie the gown around your waist and at the neck. Grab the straps from the back of the neck and slowly pull the gown forward and peel it away from you, touching only the inside of the gown. Be careful not to let the gown touch your clothes. Roll the gown into a ball, place the reusable gown in the laundry hamper. If you are using a disposable gown, dispose of it in the garbage. Perform hand hygiene for 15 seconds. Remove the face shield by grabbing the strap at the back of your head. Slowly remove it down and away from your face using the sniff position. Bend forward, eyes forward, chin out. Dispose of the face shield into the garbage. Remove your N95 mask without touching the exterior part of the mask, again using the sniff position. Remove one strap at a time, starting with the bottom strap first and removing the top strap last. Remove the straps by grasping them from the back of your head. Dispose of the N95 respirator in the garbage. Perform hand hygiene. Rooms with anti-rooms are the preferred accommodation for patients under airborne droplet and contact precautions. If there is no anti-room, remove all PPE inside the patient room at the doorway, with the exception of